hi guys welcome back to my youtube channel it's your favorite girl abiola guys today we are going to be talking about something that is really important especially if you're an international student in, in the uk that is open and planning to get the skilled worker visa not the posted work visa or the skilled worker visa the main thing the main demand don't go anywhere because this video is going to be telling you things that i'm sure you don't know and that you need to know so don't go anywhere let's get started guys i've broken down this video into 10 top things you need to know uh, so that i don't forget any so yeah let's get started the first thing you need to know as an international student that wants to switch to skilled worker visa is that you can switch within the uk from a tier 4 service to a tier 2 skilled worker visa even though we are no longer using tier 2 or tier 4 anymore but just to make it very clear in this video what i'm talking about that's why i'm still using it so that's the truth a lot of people always message me like can i switch within the uk or do i have to go back to nigeria pakistan ghana wherever they're from and i was like okay yeah i'm just going to address this once and for all the first thing you need to know is that you don't need to go anywhere you can switch within the uk you can make your application within the uk that's number one the second one this one guys is very important it's, um, for skilled worker visa normally the minimum salary requirement is twenty five thousand six hundred pounds but as an international student and as a student on a tier 4 student visa, if you are switching to a skilled worker visa, you are considered a new entrant into the UK labor market. So that your minimum requirement, your salary, minimum salary requirement is way lower than the normal. It's £20,480. And you know why you need to know this? Let's assume that you as an international student see a job that you like and you would really want to take. And it's an entry level position and the salary range is like... 20, between 23,000 to 24,000, not up to that 25,600 minimum requirement. The HR of that organization is obviously going to tell you that, oh, we can't sponsor for this role because it's not up to the minimum salary requirement. But you, as an international student, if you have this knowledge that you're a new entrant and your minimum salary requirement is different from the general one, you will be able to tell the HR that, no, no, that's not how it is. But if you don't know, then you don't know. That's what I'm telling you. You have to know these things. You have to know these things because a lot of people encounter things like that. But if you're able to sell yourself and market yourself that, it pays you to spend an international student, to be honest, because you can pay lesser salaries. It's just £20,480 in a year on like the £25,600 for any other person number three is the fact that you are watching this video and you're thinking oh but i still have posted work because i don't need this video yet ah no hello you guys are being relaxed two years is a really really short time i would like to say this i don't want anybody to misinterpret me but study work visa is great it's good people fought for it universities fought for it to be given to international students so it's amazing but skilled worker visa is the aim because personal work visa does not even count towards the five years settlement route so skilled worker visa is the aim if you can start applying right from now when you're on your master's degree to employers that are on the sponsorship list it would be great it would be great aim for skilled worker visa after your studies and but you know at the back of your mind that you have personal work visa even if you don't get it so that keeps your mind at rest of course it's like a good backup plan but if you apply to employers and your sponsorship list now and they don't even sponsor you but they hire you for another role within two years using your posted work visa to work for them they already and you work very hard for them they're already impressed they don't want to let you go so at the end of that two years they will be the ones to even offer to sponsor you but if you start working for companies that don't have sponsorship routes the other alternative is to make sure you really impress them very well in that company also and I towards maybe six months be before the end of your two years, you can tell them to apply for sponsorship license. You can tell them about it. And if they really like you, they could do that for you. So everything is about preparation, planning and preparation. For study work is very short. You have to have an idea of what exactly you want to do right from, before you finish your master's. You have to have that idea. So that's number three. Number four, guys, is that you can apply for a skilled worker visa three months before the end of your 
masters masters and bachelor students can apply three months before the end of their visa but for phd students you can apply for a skilled worker visa at the end of the, your first 12 months in the uk a lot of universities i've seen it on a lot of university sites and a lot of even immigration chambers all these lawyers or solicitors that work with students for immigrating purpose and everything and i've seen all of them put it that way you can only apply for a skilled worker visa when you've completed your the, um, when you've completed your master's that's so wrong according to official uk guidance you can apply three months before your course end date for not, not your visa end date to your course end date you can apply for a skilled worker visa and just you can switch you can switch it's not like post-study work visa post-study work visa you need to finish your course and your result has, uh, has to be out because post-study work visa is tied to you completing your studentship but skilled worker visa is not tied to it so you can apply three months before so that's number four number five guys is this one a lot of people are already falling into that hole falling into that hole without knowing your four months extra at the end of your masters people think oh yeah i can just just start working officially no i'm going to try and put insert it into this video the official guidelines guys you can see the arrows a student must not fill a full-time permanent vacancy unless the conditions in appendix student 26.6 apply now let's see what the appendix is talking about so you guys can see the appendix 26.6 you can only start working permanently if you've applied for a skilled worker visa that's the summary you cannot take on a permanent full-time position within that four months you are still limited by the fact that you are still on a tier 4 student visa so you should not be filling any permanent vacancy any role you take within this four months should be like an internship or a temporary role or a probation period but not a permanent role because that breaks the tier 4 student visa rules once you apply for a skilled worker visa you can take on a permanent role but until then, until then, you cannot take on a permanent role. That's it. But if it was a post-study work visa, until your post-study work visa comes out, you are still limited by the student visa rules. So you can see, they have like differences. It's tricky. Once you apply for a skilled worker visa, you can start working full-time and permanently. But for post-study work visa, you have to wait for your post-study work visa to come out before you can do any permanent and full-time role so that's it that's number five number six do you guys know that if you're an international student and you're switching from a tier for senior visa to a skilled worker visa you are not going to pay any your employer rather is not going to pay any immigration skills charge immigration skills charge for those who don't know is the money that employers pay to the ukvi to sponsor people into the uk 300 plus for 300 plus i don't know the exact figure i'm going to try and put it in this video it's, this video is 300 plus immigration skills charge that small organizations need to pay to sponsor someone but if you are going if you get a job with a medium to large organization is 1000 per year okay? so for some employers like why should we pay that much when you can get somebody to take your role in the uk but if you know your right as an international student, you can tell the employer straight up during your interview stage that and also if you sponsor me for a visa you're not going to need to pay any immigration skills charge because i'm an international student know the rules need to know the rules so that you can sell yourself to the employers well, during your interviews you can let them know sponsoring you is not going to cost them anything of course they are still going to pay for cos cos this is another okay this is number seven cos payment is 199 that's the 199 pounds and that's the only thing required that's the only thing required they have to pay for the cos which is 199 pounds but the immigration skills charge go 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 no payment for international students it is free it is free know this and no peace thank you <laughs> let's go on to number eight number eight is no need to show tb test of course no need to show TB test. No need to show test of English or proof of English language proficiency because you've already studied in the UK. It is assumed that you already you you are proficient. That has been evaluated before for your tier four student application, so you don't need that anymore. And the cocoa most important. No need for proof of funds. 
because if you apply for a skilled worker visa you need to ship um that you have 1000 to 70 pounds in your account but if you're applying as an international student that is already in the uk no need to show any proof of funds period for either you or your dependents it is free it is free as long as you've completed your 12 months in the uk and you're switching it is free no need for you to show your proof of funds which is pretty great guys number nine this one is no longer really i mean i just wanted to say it so that you guys can know like how different it is for international students when they want to switch to post study work visa and the little benefits and the little advantages that the government has put into the guidance for us to benefit us there used to be something called the resident labor test that was scrapped this year and it was for international students if any employer wants to sponsor somebody to come and work in the uk they have to carry out a resident labor test and prove to the uk government that there is nobody in the uk that they've interviewed they've advertised through they've interviewed people and there's nobody in the uk that can do that job that they have to sponsor someone but for international students they were always excluded from that resident labor test if you're an international student the employer does not need to carry out any test or justify anything to the uk government for why they want to give you that role so that's also another important thing if there are some hr people that don't know a lot about this visa, visa guidance especially as it pertains to international students so i've seen some employers and hr people that they still don't know that the resident labor test has been cancelled this year by boris johnson it was announced this year and i no longer exist so there are some employers that we tell you that oh yeah we have to do resident labor test to make sure that there's no but else that can do this role we have to justify this to the government so it's very important for you to be able to tell them that no i should tell them that first it has been cancelled and secondly even if it was still active even if it still existed international students are exempted from that resident labor test rlt international students have always been excluded from that you can sponsor an international student without any justification whatsoever to the government on why you want to sponsor that person okay so guys we've come to the last one number 10 which is the final one is the cost if you want to apply for a skilled worker visa outside the uk it is six ten pounds but since you're inside the uk as an international student you'll be paying several rate than ten pounds if the skilled worker visa is going to be between one and three years but if it's going to be more than three years that is if it is between three and five years but outside the uk is one thousand to twenty pounds but for inside the uk it is one thousand four hundred and eight pounds for your visa application and your ihs fee of course is 614 per year per each year so for each year so that's it guys you guys can calculate that i mean when you get to that stage but that's it guys i hope this video has enlightened you more about what it means to be an international student in, in the uk and being able to sell yourself to employers that was the sponsorship list on why they should sponsor you and you know a lot more than you did when you started this video i love you guys too much please please and please subscribe to my youtube channel please let's get to five thousand k before the end of this year i know we can do it we can achieve it we can achieve it i love you guys so much